Cecily. Your intellectual pleasures await you, my child. You should put away your diary, Cecily. I really don't see why you should keep a diary at all. I keep a diary in order to enter the wonderful secrets of my life. If I didn't write them down, I should probably forget all about them. Memory, my dear Cecily, is the diary that we all carry about with us. I believe memory is responsible for nearly all these three-volume novels people write nowadays. Do not speak slightingly of the three-volume novel, Cecily. I wrote one myself in earlier days. Did you really, Miss Prism? I hope it did not end happily. The good ended happily, and the bad unhappily. That is what fiction means. Hmm. To your work, child. These speculations are profitless. But I see dear Dr. Chasuble coming through the garden. Oh, Dr. Chasuble. This is indeed a pleasure. And how are we today? Miss Prism, you are, I trust, well. Miss Prism has just been complaining of a slight headache. I think it would do her so much good to have a short stroll with you in the park, Dr. Chasuble. Cecily, I have not mentioned anything about a headache. No, dear Miss Prism, I know that. But I felt instinctively that you had a headache. Indeed, I was thinking about that, not my German lesson, when the rector came along. I hope, Cecily, you are not inattentive. Oh, I'm afraid I am. That's strange. Were I fortunate enough to be Miss Prism's pupil, I would hang upon her lips. I, 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 I spoke metaphorically. My metaphor was drawn from bees. Oh. <clears throat> I shall um, see you both, no doubt, at Evensong. If I may speak candidly. Pray do. I think whenever one has anything unpleasant to say, one should always be quite candid. Yes. Well, to speak with perfect candor, Cecily, I wish you were fully 42 and more than usually plain for your age.